lesson, we will calculate a couple different measures of spread. Here we have a data set that contains 25 test scores on the last statistics test. We want to know what measure of spread should be used to describe this data, and then we want to calculate that measure of spread. What determines whether you use the variance or standard deviation as your measure of spread, or the interquartile range? The answer to that question is, it depends on the shape of the data distribution and whether the data distribution has outliers or not. One way to look at a data set and to see the shape of the data set and whether there are outliers or not is to look at either a dot plot or a modified box plot. Because there were 25 scores, I chose a modified box plot. And here is the modified box plot for our 25 data values. When we look at the box plot, we see that there are two outliers in the data set. Because of the outliers, we want to use a resistant measure of spread. The interquartile range is a resistant measure of spread. Both the variance and the standard deviation are non-resistant statistics and could be influenced by those two outliers. So the correct measure of spread for this set of data would be the interquartile range. So let's calculate that now. The first thing you must do in order to calculate the interquartile range is order the data points from least to greatest. Here are our 25 test scores ordered from least to greatest. Once they are ordered, we want to find the median of the data set. There are 25 data points, an odd number, so our median will be the middle value of the data set. It should be our 13th observation. 12 will be less than our median, 12 will be greater than our median. Let's find the 13th observation. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. 77 is the median of our data set. Remember, the interquartile range is equal to the third quartile minus the first quartile. The first step in finding the third and the first quartile is to locate the median of the data set. We have, we have done that. Now let's find the third quartile. The third quartile is the median of the numbers above the median of our data set. So we want to find the median of those numbers. The median of these numbers will be our third quartile. There are 12 observations in the list above the median. 12 is an even number, so our median will be the average of the two middle numbers. The two middle numbers are both 87. So when we take the average of those two numbers, we find that Q3 is just equal to 87. Now we need to find Q1. Q1 is the median of the observations less than the median of the data set. Again, there are 12 observations below the median. That's an even number. So the median of those 12 numbers will be the average of the two middle numbers. What are the two middle numbers? The two middle numbers are 72 and 73. So Q1 is the average of those two numbers, which is just 72.5. Now we have everything we need to find our interquartile range. The interquartile range is the third quartile, 87, minus the first quartile of 72 and a half. And our interquartile range is 14.5. And we can say that the range of the middle 50% of the data is 14.5 points. There are a couple different ways to find the interquartile range on your calculator. Let's show you those ways now. The first thing I did is I entered the data into list one. There is the raw data. I'm going to sort it like we had before. You don't need to do this, but I'm going to go ahead and do it. To sort it, you go to stat, down to number two, sort ascending. We want to sort list one, 
Now when we look at list one, we see the data is sorted. Remember we looked at the modified box plot to look at the shape of the data distribution and whether there were outliers or not. Let's go back and create that modified box plot. We can do that through second stat plot. Here is our modified box plot of list one. So we do zoom nine, zoom stat, and here is our modified box plot. On our modified box plot, if we hit trace, our cursor is sitting at the median of 77. That's what we found when we ordered our data points and found the median. If we hit the right arrow, it goes up to Q3, which is 87. That's what we found. If you hit the right arrow again, it tells you the maximum value of 92. Now let's go back to the left. Again, Q3, the median. We go left one more and we find Q1 is 72.5. Using the modified box plot, we can find Q3 and Q1 and, f and do the subtraction and find our interquartile range. Just showing you going to the left, there is our minimum, there is the left endpoint of our box in Wixers, the modified box plot, it's 67. Then we have an outlier at 32 and the minimum at value, which is also an outlier, at 30. Another way to find the interquartile range using your calculator, remember our data is in a list. If we do stat and over to calc, do one variable statistics of our list, and we arrow down, we find the minimum value is 30. There's our first quartile, 72 and a half. We need that to find the interquartile range. Our median of 77 and our third quartile of 87. So if we do Q3 minus Q1, we will have the interquartile range. So you can find Q1 and Q3 using one variable statistics in the calculator, or you can get it from a box plot or a modified box plot on the calculator. Before leaving this data set of 25 test scores, let's also calculate the range of the test scores. Remember, the range is just equal to the maximum minus the minimum value. So we need to find the maximum value and the minimum value in our data set. The maximum value is 92. The minimum value is 30. This means that the range is equal to 92 minus 30, which is 62. So the range equals 62 points for the 25 test scores. So in this lesson, we calculated the interquartile range, which is a resistance statistic. You want to use it when you have outliers.